and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we just kind of sit back, relax, and share some of the stuff that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source that we thought was kind of interesting. Maybe you'll find it interesting, but hey, everyone, how's it going? We have another fun, fantastic Wednesday. I know I am. Yay. Happy Linux Wednesday. Yay. Happy Linux The fun Wednesday. starts now. <laughs> Whoa, Pedro. You, you get a warning if you're going to be like, throwing that much energy out right at the beginning. That's a high bar, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Jill, what's up? Oh, boy. So I had a great time at Monday's Community Hack Night at Riot Games once again. Lots of people showing off open source projects, which is really wonderful. And I'm looking forward to the new games coming out by um, coming out of uh, Riot. This is a big deal, and I'm hope hoping a, a lot of them play well on Linux because there's a first-person shooter like CS:GO, but with the League of Legends characters, and I think that would be not really a fun. single one of them will be on Steam or work with Linux. I know, and that was <laughs> yeah. I was I even talked to the employees about that. I'm like, you guys really need to be on Steam. Uh -uh. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> so we. You can at least play him in Proton, Man. but I'm sure Matthew's Luteris will make it work for us. So, <laughs> optimism, ladies and gentlemen, right out of the <laughs> gate. Hey, I got to give Riot Games uh, a little bit of credit because they're actually going to have uh, games uh, as in plural. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> times these. Uh, I found. I know this has been a feature for a while. I've never used it, but I finally did. One thing I've always had an issue with is up until not recent recently, but the easiest way is like, oh, here's a link that I would like to send to tablet X, Y, or Z. And mm -hmm. it's it like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I'll just message myself on one of the 300 Google accounts that it's created for me <laughs> yeah. and just go to that messenger and do that. I noticed in the um, latest version of Chrome, which I'm on Debian 10, so this is probably like an eight-year-old version of Chrome. Uh, when I right-click on a tab, it has send to and it's got all my tablets listed mm -hmm. around the house it's it, like yeah i noticed that mm -hmm. popped up a couple of months Recently. ago so yeah. it's not yeah. that old yeah <laughs> well maybe it's not that old but new to me it's like oh let's test that oh that's that that's neat i'm down with yeah. it yeah <laughs> so i can definitely send and if you fire. do it with the youtube tab it uh, adds the uh the time stamp oh okay yeah. to whatever video mm -hmm. you're watching so good job there google yay <laughs> I like that. also uh this, wait that that yes this thing out of shot that you can't see for the audio listeners uh, jill <laughs> yes yeah Th this is a little different this is a this is our old new mixer that i've plugged in mm -hmm. as opposed to our new old mixer that makes sense if you don't yes. think about it too much <laughs> <laughs> this is the one we used to have which uh we we changed some stuff with the audio then an, a friend of a friend was like hey man i have a big honking studio mixer that i don't use anymore would you like it and i said it'll take me one of those uh big honking studio mixers yes <laughs> and mm -hmm. now we do everything on a digital interface like all of our routing and stuff like that so there's really not the need for it but I was like, yeah, it's fine. But I changed this back because this is a better analog and it has USB on it, which we're not going to be using for the show. But what it's going to allow me to do is start our podcasting basic series. Because this is just a big blown up version of your basic like Xenix 802 or 804. Like Jordan has. Like we started with this show. And I want mm -hmm. to start a series of like, this is how you do this. You connect this. This is your basic mix minus. And this is how nice. you record a podcast. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be brilliant. Pedro, what Yay. exciting things are you up to? <laughs> uh, I'm home this week. I'm learning about uh, Cisco stuff. I'm getting the ICDN2 course uh, out of the way so I can then take the CCNA certification later on. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it it's... I, I, I am I am starting to see I mentioned this in the uh, the pre-show it's like I am starting to see why people um, don't really like the Cisco stuff all that much and they will tolerate mm. it up to a point <laughs> it's when they start pushing the really Cisco-y stuff that they go no mm -hmm. I always wonder that you know <laughs> when you get that much vendor lock in all it, <laughs> it, it will eventually happen somebody will come along in the second you have option legitimate option two yeah, peace. And there is um, 
there is another sort of um competitor out there which is actually using completely linux based systems called cumulus mm. yeah mm. i think that's their name yes and uh yeah they're all linux all the time and that's that's very interesting and i would very much like if work paid for me to get my certification on that particular brand <laughs> yeah <laughs> that'd be awesome enterprise stuff you could also be looking at like a uh, micro tick um yeah yeah they make yeah. It, like affordable but man you gotta go through their interface so <laughs> i always like to start the show with some weird little nitpicky thing that apparently just bugs <laughs> people that i was like i okay i guess that was a thing but it's gone yeah. <laughs> oh yeah it's gone so see you cashew and uh big thanks to arthur and for pointing this out i had seen their tweet but I forgot to add it to the notes, and then I saw Arthur and post about it on Discord. It's like, all right, yay, <laughs> we're doing that then. Uh, but yeah, it is the stupid, stupid little cashew that was always right there on the top right uh, of the screen in KDE is gone. It's absolutely gone. <laughs> they got rid of it. They got rid of the hamburger menu toolbox that they uh, replaced the cashew with on uh, Plasma Five. And yes, after 11 years, because this was introduced in KDE 4, so almost 12 years now, that piece of software trash, which always mm -hmm. stuck out like a sore <laughs> thumb, and it was made completely redundant. This is the big one. It was made completely redundant by, you know, having the ability to right-click on the desktop. It gave you all those very same options that that stupid little cashew gave you. Finally. <laughs> Thank you, yes. KD. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> it seems like there's a mixed thing with that. It was like, yes, victory, followed by, I didn't even know it was there. Yeah. A lot of people didn't even ever pay attention to it. A lot of people never even use KD. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always found it annoying because it would be, you know, and from the corner of my eye, this magic bean would show up. <laughs> and I didn't know what it was called either. I used to just call it a magic bean for getting ugly desktop widgets and activities. But there's some pretty ones too. <laughs> right on, right on. Um, victory for some, nonplussed for others. But yes. yeah. yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> um, if we're going to cover KDE, we got to say good things about Gnome. Yes. Well, yeah, and to be <laughs> fair, if KDE did a good, it stands to reason that someone should do a good for GNOME. In this case, it was canonical. And uh, there was a, a post, a very lengthy post, uh, describing exactly Man, that's, what, that's a uh, bit ex existential, right? What is GNOME Shell, really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And the, uh, well, like, the whole post actually does a very good job of describing exactly why GNOME was demonstrably bad and what it is that they changed in version uh, 334 uh, for Ubuntu. And it made a difference, and there were a lot of people writing articles just like, oh, it's finally, like, really good, unless you ask Strider, at which point he'll say that it always worked fine, what are you talking about? Uh, but <laughs> that is Strider after all. Uh, but yeah, the um, the big fix is they nuked the power saving slash CPU cycle reducing bits from the code. For the That's most one part. way to do it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, Fair enough. All right. So you remove the power saving bits. So, yeah. I hope that's not going to hurt laptop users, which are the vast majority of uh, Linux on the desktop users out there. But, you know, that's good. That 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 is fair. And as I read through everything, it's like, wow. I mean, it, it, it really tickled my um, confirmation bias because <laughs> it showed exactly how fundamentally broken GNOME was by design and mm -hmm. now canonicals got in and fixed most of it they still have some issues they yeah. actually list out a couple of issues that they still need to fix but thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah the uh bentu 1910 released it, it really improved uh gnome I, I was really impressed with the speed of gnome and what's really nice is the goal for gnome shell in ubuntu 20.04 lts is to make gnome um very fast, even faster on newer machines. And then the goal for GNOME Shell and Ubuntu 20.10 is to make GNOME high performance on slower, older machines, which is a really good thing because that's something that's, that's definitely been an issue. 
And we're looking forward, actually, to Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, which will be released April 23rd, 2020, with GNOME 3.36. So looking forward to that. Every improvement um, in the last couple of years has been really good. And I've noticed a huge speed improvement and uh, not uh, so much garbage I, collection. There's Strider uh, making my point right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the end of the day, though, I mean, how many people are really... Would, Gnome just doesn't seem like something that I would apply to an older machine. It's like that. No, no, that that's mm -hmm. why Mate exists. That's why XFCE, yeah. LXD, or LXQT, as it is known nowadays, uh, yes. or just mm -hmm. straight up OpenBox or FluxBox or yeah, anything other Window than maker. Gnome or KDE. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but then again, I mean, you think about it. No matter what hardware you have, what comes pre-installed? What's a default desktop? And that's usually what people stick with and they're unaware. So it's good yeah. that we're getting performance improvements because that's still going to be their first Linux experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That exactly. is usually what's going to dictate whether or not people say, hey, I kind of like this. There are some issues, but I kind of like this. Or whether they go, yeah, I can't figure this out at all. Goodbye. And they never come back. <laughs> well, I mean, every time I've used GNOME is to open the terminal, which takes a minute to get to, um, to sudo apt install xfc4. Yes, um, GNOME is the Linux equivalent of Internet Explorer. Yeah. Good point. Broken by design. You see, <laughs> I like Gnome. These two are just haters. Oh. I like Gnome hey. too. 1910, maybe. Oh, Pop OS is the best Im implementation of Gnome out there, really. <laughs> so, yes, I'm really excited. It was actually excited about this. Uh, Ubuntu, yeah, yay, Ubuntu 1910 out of the box comes with the ability to enable a DNLA media server without the need to install third party software. Yay! Been waiting for that functionality for a while, actually. And it uses the DNLA and, of course, the universal plug-and-play protocols to communicate with other multimedia de de devices on your network, such as a Roku box, smart TV, or game console. Danger. Danger, Will yeah. Robinson. Uh, is it secure? Yeah, DLNA yeah, is not that. secure. Basically, this that. is a big throwdown where, like, your parents can watch what you're sending. Yeah, Pretty exactly. Much, yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's nice because I don't have to install Plex or Kodi or Jellyfin on a computer just to look at one file, you know, over the network, <laughs> which is really nice. And um, in the article, they he talked about, Joey had talked about how he had some issues uh, streaming um, 1080p and had to bring it down to 720. Now, I streamed a 1080p MKV file. Did have a little stuttering, but it, it it looked really nice. But I was doing it over Ethernet, not Wi-Fi, <laughs> so that does make a difference. Hmm. So I was really happy to hear about this. this uh, yeah, they. Uh, it's out of Kopi the box. Wimpy. That's pretty yeah. good. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. important bit of it, though. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, if it's a turnkey, I'm like, oh, this just works, TM. You know, there's no, because you're a special mm -hmm. breed. I know. People listening, this is like no setting up a Plex server is easy to us. Yeah, that that's mm -hmm. natural. Yeah, you, something you'd want to do, but hey, if you just want to watch something from point A to point B. There you yeah. go. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it is just a switch. So yeah, yeah that default experience, like you were saying earlier, but it's it's yeah. very important, mm -hmm. and this is very nice to have. <laughs> it is brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, CAD. Did anybody take yeah. a CAD CAM class like in secondary school or anything like that? <laughs> yes. I had to make CAD work for people because uh, the computers that it was supposed to run on didn't. Hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> but <yeah>. thing, <laughs> during those classes, I always thought, man, this is all 2D. It's kind of boring. Wouldn't, wouldn't this be improved by, I don't know, Deathmatch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shaky control <laughs> options? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So this is this is awesome. This is a new piece of software called Unity Reflect, um, which bring lets you bring in 3D models to game engines like Unity. Um, so you, you excuse me. So you could bring in your your 3D models um, into the game engine Unity, but that's always been a challenge. Whether it's from Revit, 3D 3ds Max, CAD, Maya, Moto, or Blender. And trust me, I know about this. <laughs> I've had to do this a lot. Uh, bringing files into um, actually 
from any 3D software into any other 3D software sometimes is a pain. <laughs> and this software makes it much easier. Um, you know, often vertices and polygons get moved or, re or misplaced in the conversion, and you have to spend a lot of time and sometimes a lot of money on software to fix it. And yeah, I've, I've had to do that before as well. But this is open source and Reflect helps solve this by making it easier for architects to visualize their data without having to learn game development. So it's it's really, really awesome. It's an open source tool. I know a lot of, in fact, I was just talking to my students about it on Monday and some of them are architecture students as well. And they were thrilled to find out about this. Yeah, uh, and this a, is a yeah. pretty good move from Unity. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it that the company that's now being led by uh, former EA CEO John Ricitello would, yeah. you know, decide, let's put out an open source tool to actually help people. Though, before I give them too much praise, I did try to find, mm -hmm. like, a GitHub or a GitLab or any kind of repository that contained um, Unity Reflect to see what kind of license they were using. I couldn't find it. So if anyone out mm -hmm. there can send it to me, please. Yeah. I'll, con I'll continue my know. praise next week after people yeah. give me the link. How's that? <laughs> as long as we can do the death match, I'm cool. Great. Yeah, I can't it. wait to use it. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe we all know what a Reddit is. <laughs> it's not yeah. as cool as dig hi i'm oh, ben from 2005 the other one right? yes <laughs> but there's a couple ways to access it i know in mobile um i use uh relay from t brady and i think that's an excellent client on the desktop i can't the new reddit i can't deal with it i use old reddit with a reddit enhancement suite but uh Option three has kind of showed up a little bit, question mark. Well, option three is just mm -hmm. the default, but inside an Electron wrapper, that, because that's yes. what it is. And it is <laughs> yes. the unofficial Reddit desktop <laughs> app. And it is, uh, it's an NPM project. You can clone it from GitHub and just use NPM to build it, which I did, because I was kind of curious to see just exactly how many uh, dependencies it would pull. 231, if you'd like to oh, keep wow. count. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, to build an Electron uh, wrapper for Reddit, you need 231 dependencies <laughs> from NPM. And I left a, um, a little command in the show notes for you to then delete all of those dependencies because I didn't want them. Chances are you're not going to either. Yeah. <laughs> and once you do build it, it does uh, create an app image as long as a deb and an unpackaged version so you could just get to using it however you prefer it. So yeah, it, it's basically the same experience as it is on the browser. There is, like you said, the Debian package and the app image because I cloned yes. it yes. and I went to the NPM and I was like, yeah, and that's when old man Vin uh, stopped that. Uh, <laughs> because I don't like phishing that out. I'm glad you put that command I in there. I can give you the, the yeah. app right, image. Right. I still have it. <laughs> um, well, there's an app image available for download. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. On the page. I didn't even see that. And yeah. it works it, great. It's below the <laughs> Debian package. And I'll take an app yeah. image over yeah. installing a pack of that any day. And I launched it. It ran. It looked like new Reddit. And so I went off screeching out of the room and crawled into a quarter and shook for a moment until I worked up the bravery to go back to regular Reddit because that new Reddit, woof, woof. <laughs> yeah, yes. I guess we shouldn't call it new Reddit. It's been out for a few years, but ugh. Yeah, uh. yeah. People still don't like it. No, I I use Reddit yeah, for I, news I added browsing. The uh, old dot before the uh, the URL on my bookmark. So you know, it yeah. does look oh, a little man. bit like Facebook. Yeah, people do get freaked <laughs> yeah. out by Node.js depths, especially like I yeah. want to install this sixty meg file. That'll be two hundred megs of depths, please. Um, yep. yeah, <laughs> I know Bizarro Moon World. Some people have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran, ran the app image and it, yeah, it worked great. And it was really fast. Actually, I, it, it seemed to me, you know, I, I went ahead and, and put it in a web browser too. And it actually seemed to work a little bit more zippy on the app image. I'm guessing so... it was about as fast as a recent build of Chromium. <laughs> it yeah. Right on a limb. Chromium with <laughs> yes. everything else disabled. All it needs to do is render Reddit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, yeah. Go try it out. Again, that'll be in the show notes. Uh, something that I use yes. well, pretty much every um, 
<laughs> Saturday and this afternoon because it is one of the best tools for seeking through video that I've found is yeah. MPV. Mm -hmm. And there's a hot, fresh new version of that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> MPV Media Player 0 0.30.0 is out with some major new features and lots of bug fixes, including multiple <laughs> waves. Whatever, Wayland. whatever. I'm just here for the Vulcan. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah, well, well <laughs> that's a what. Lot of yes, a lot. <laughs> so includes multiple Wayland performance improvements and fixes, and there are important performance improvements to video playback and caching. And I'll let Ven and Pedro talk about the major <laughs> new addition. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is MPV. Vulcan. Uh, if you look <laughs> at the like the list, like the first few ones, like oh, Vulcan Cuda interoperability, yep. Vulcan <laughs> this, Vulcan that, Vulcan the others. So, Vulcan Wolf of okay. all that. Wait, that's probably not. <laughs> yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> no, they um, they use Lip Placebo's Vulcan implementation, and. That basically enabled hardware uh, decoding through Vulkan all over the shop. And I'm very much in favor of this move because mm. I mm. want my uh, all Vulkan desktop by 2020, please. Or 2022, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's probably going to be a thing. It's coming in the future, maybe at some point. But uh, I was real mm -hmm. happy to see that. And also something that kind of like shook us, like gamepad support? Oh, okay. yeah. That, that could be <laughs> handy, you know, for a sit-down experience yeah. <laughs> but just just really good to see and i didn't start using it until i needed something to scrub through videos at speed because mm -hmm. that's how i do the timestamps of like zzz, zzz, like that and uh vlc is great but it it's kind of chunky when seeking through video. yeah it's very chunky yeah, if very, you look very at the chunky. cpu utilization it goes places <laughs> yeah so, and 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 it, it's based on M player, which is actually a little sharper and clearer than VLC. <laughs> so, and and it performs better. So, that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know about the sharper and clearer thing, but it's definitely it is, a yeah. thing. <laughs> so, uh, I made a thing creating image masks with OBS Studio on Linux because you see us down here in these little cute circles. Oh, they're adorable. Um, you too <laughs> can be. Uh, somebody who does that? I don't know. Maybe you want to play a video game and you don't want that boring round circle. I like making things when I run across something like, that's not very straightforward. And it's not, because even in a Venn tutorial, this still took how many steps did this take? 9, 10, 11. 11 steps to get this done. But what this will allow you to do is maintain a full shot like this, because you might be thinking, hey, man, this is easy to do. I'll just put an image mask around that. And you can. Mm -hmm. That'll work. But as soon as you try to go to another shot, you'll end up with that circle following you around. Like, and it's it's not a fun time. So, yeah, that, that <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> you, you want to be able to do that, then whoop, I'm down here. And it doesn't have to be a circle. It could be a triangle. Huge fan <laughs> of triangles. Yes. <laughs> Pedro, do you think you could pull it off? You can do this. I can, but it, it also involves me wearing clothes when I'm streaming on Tuesdays. No, it doesn't. We've already covered this. <laughs> <laughs> also, so, it's cold, yeah. so you're going to be wearing clothes anyway. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I guess. Okay, that is fair. During the winter, that that that's feasible. All right. Yeah. See, <laughs> we're working on getting uh, Pedro and Jordan to use webcams. Um, so I've already <laughs> pre-compiled the anti-excuse list. I'm just waiting. <laughs> They're just I'll knock them right back out. <laughs> it's I all about the it. clothes, man. <laughs> that that's it. That's why we have a nice little circle shot. So that's yeah. great. You don't have to worry about the clothes anymore. Ah, winning. Um, <laughs> so go make some use of that if you can. On the maybe not great fun happy news, we do still have a update from Purism. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go down a limb and say this is probably not the best. If you don't know, they're having a little uh, bit of an issue shipping uh -huh. out the hardware for the Librem 5. And here's the thing. Hardware is hard. That's why it's called hardware. I mean, it's really, mm -hmm. really, really hard. Yeah. And you know what? 
you know, you may never get that thing because that's kind of how crowdfunding works, period. It has nothing to do with purism at all, even though they've successfully delivered things. Mm -hmm. So if you back this product, you know, with the thought of, hey, man, I've given you money. Where's my thing? Uh, get a refund and quit screeching on the Internet. So, yeah, <laughs> that said, reading through this post, I'm going to be honest with you, kind of triggered my spidey senses. Pedro, I'm not alone in that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're not. See, they, I think they're aware of this, too, because of how they worded the post. But people don't necessarily want uh, an unfinished product or an early batch of a particular bit of hardware. They just want something to justify the money that they put down on the crowdfunding. And if a lot more people are asking for that early product, uh, that probably means you've taken too long and people are getting a bit antsy. And you yourselves have admitted that uh, this is the first post in a while. So people don't like that silence. It, that starts making people's uh, investment money itch or the money mm -hmm. that they have perceived as an investment because it's crowdfunding, it's not an investment. But yeah, and also in the article, this one is just one example, but you titled a bullet point list, Purism Delivers, and you listed <laughs> everything you did that isn't the Librem 5 in a post about the Librem 5. That's not helping. <laughs> no. And I, yeah, <laughs> very good point, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> and I think, you know, Purism just really underestimated how difficult hardware manufacturing can be, as Ven had stated particularly with cell phones. And it's just that, you know, the transparency from purism just isn't at the same level as Pine 64. It just hasn't been. And we will just have to wait wait and see what comes next. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it, it, you know, all the things we want to see are coming. And, uh, you know, because I'm I rooting for them. I want them to succeed. I don't think anybody wants them to fail. At all. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people just want something. Yeah. That yeah. communication is a huge, huge thing. And there'll be a link in the show notes. I was reading, it was like, ah, this something rubs me wrong about this post. And mm -hmm. an electrical engineer kind of walked through and he's like, listen, dude, I've been doing this stuff for 20 years. Here's some of the issues they probably are facing that are IRL. It's like, oh, that doesn't help my feels. I don't know if spiders have feelings, so <laughs> who knows, man. Uh, before we get out of here, mm -hmm. I just, we, th this is our fun post. This is our, uh, okay. <laughs> I guess oh we need boy. a whipping boy here from time to time. <laughs> the, the, this is like just getting the bat and like getting softballs tossed to us because <laughs> yeah. that's all it is, man. This is from Austin Pocus. Would you go for Pocus? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That could be a thing. Uh, from HackerNoon.com in a post called leaving Linux for Mac after 15 years. It's like, I'm just going to read this first little bit. I'm sorry, Linux. It's not me. It's you. The year of the Linux de desktops are dead in general, <laughs> Brad. Um, never came to fruition. It was always next year, year after, da 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 da, da And uh, just goes through a, <laughs> a, a list of, I can't say the horse squeeze. That this is yes. effectively... <laughs> what it is this is a fundamental m m lack of understanding of how linux works like oh my rx 5700 didn't work pavu controls too hard um <laughs> wi-fi yeah. didn't work rtx cards aren't support i'll get to that in a minute and trust yeah. me it's in the text um <laughs> then on to whatever it's like please someone save me here's the problems audio configuration default wi-fi graphics card support and uh a ui ux <laughs> too many choices i need yeah. something to be locked thank you save me Mac. <laughs> save me apple whatever will i do true story bro um, yes. yeah he he posted that 15 years. He actually did. 15 <laughs> years. And by 15 years, I can only assume he means he's run Linux for 15 years because he installed it once in a VM in 2004. This yeah. is the only thing. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, man, I've clearly ran it for... There was this time in, you know, 2004, I spooled up VMware and I, I 
installed it that one man linux expert bro installed seven linux okay yeah uh, i'm just gonna come right and just say this we're joking around we're having a good time and i don't mean this with any amount of malice or snark i'll believe you like not even a little bit when you say mm -hmm. you've ran Linux nope. for 15 years, unless mm -hmm. it was by uh, my previous example. And one of the things we're going to say with that is one of the big giveaways, and I mean, it's a big one, is that you bought an RX 5700 XT and expected the uh -huh. Mesa drivers to be in a workable state <laughs> like after release, this soon after release. Man, are you kidding me? No one's buying. They're like, how did you not know that? <laughs> uh, 100%. Jill's husband, Steve, all right? He thinks Linux... <laughs> yeah is a Canadian YouTuber that's like real hyperactive, but you know what? He knew a 5700 XT wouldn't be ready to yeah. soon out. All right? He actually did, yes. I'm just saying, man. Uh, that's never happened in the history of ever with AMD before that with ATI. Uh, also with your NVIDIA, like, well, the 20 series, the RTX, they don't, they're too new, they don't work. Brad, that's NVIDIA shipped false. the 20X drivers three days, but I'll be generous, a week after release for Linux. Mm -hmm. And I know they work because we're streaming and recording using an RTX right now. <laughs> <Yes>. RTX <laughs> is, in fact, on. Um, but I'm mostly speechless, mostly so, mm -hmm. about Pavu yeah, control, just, which we, yeah. <laughs> we love Pavu control because it puts all other audio setups for Windows or Mac to absolute to shame. shame. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Simply by ease of use. Nothing is like that straightforward that I can walk through with anyone and be like, do this, do this. They're like, oh, wow, that's kind of brilliant. You know, it's as user friendly as you can make a tool for configuring sound outputs, inputs, and different mm -hmm. modes, man. The 15 years, Brad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't have a problem with you ditching Linux from Mac. Nay, that's why I originally read this article. I was like, okay, you know, hey man, no harm, no foul. Linux is not your gem. And I was really curious, but like after 15 years, I'm like, you got some points in here. I guarantee you, man, like something really hit you, but you didn't. You, no. Borderline fabrication and... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm borderline? Gonna, Okay. Yeah, Straight border line. I was trying to be nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Clickbait. What I got a problem with is like you're throwing Linux under the bus over issues that could have been solved by anybody after spending a weekend with Linux, much yeah. less 15 mm -hmm. years. <laughs> no, it, yeah. It I was... read this. I read this whole thing because I saw Ven had like a big chunk of uh, text in the notes. That's it's like, always okay, a bad I gotta read sign, this. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta read this. So I read all of it. It's like, wow, I, dude, mental gymnastics. You <laughs> aced. You got the freaking gold medal with this one. Uh, straw man arguments left and right. Um, I, it, this is the kind of post that I haven't genuinely seen written since I don't know, 2011, 2012 ish. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it's been that long. And hey, if you want to buy a MacBook. Uh, MacBook, that's that's cool. That's that's fine. I want uh, an x86 MacBook or MacBook Pro for my hoarding. Uh, I mean, collection. Um, <laughs> it, but you don't need to make stuff up. Everyone knows that you're basically feeding them a line of bull poop. Yeah. <laughs> I so have, don't. <laughs> I've spent way too much time thinking. I have like one like less plausible but possibly plausible theory as to what really could what if the guy's just a straight up devops nightmare he probably is mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like jordan but what if jordan didn't know linux <laughs> yeah oh there we go and yeah. I, I didn't think you saying that you have to be an audio engineer to make it work as an audio engineer no. you don't <laughs> No, <laughs> Jill, but you're only going to say nice things. So yeah. <laughs> so my reaction too was wow. So one of the commenters commenters in the article states, "Are these the kind of posts we can expect from staff?" Question mark. Pretty juvenile, <laughs> and that kind of sums it up for me. That's Jill. <laughs> I read that. That's Jill and, saying uh, that to you. Yeah. That's like saying some smack about your mother. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, Jill you know, is the nicest person we've ever had on any of uh, the Linux Gamecast shows, and she's calling you out. Yeah. Listen, I don't care. I've been wearing penguin dresses for 15 years, and. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I mean, don't it's even, like, like we, this did is, he even Google it? Google it, it's his problems? It's so over the top <laughs> oh and God. ridiculous. You can't get angry at it. You're like, oh, little yeah. buddy. That's a, to keep that, but don't write anything. I can't take anything <laughs> you've ever write seriously again. Oh, dude. I don't even know yeah. what to say to that. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, stay away from Linux because you have to be an audio engineer and apparently RTFM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you need to be an audio engineer to use Pavu Control. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that. Audio engineering at its core, baby. Um, <laughs> that's my secret. <laughs> Pavu Control. Oh, we need to make that a shirt. Can we make that a shirt? <laughs> I've run seven Linux. Um, beautiful people, if you want to help us out, you want to support our show, keep us ad free, loud, live, and independent, you can do that by heading over to linuxgamecast.com. We got a support button with a bunch of drop down stuff. Where you can become one of our beautiful party patrons. Uh, Jill, we have a new one this week. Yeah, Exalty. Wonderful. He has already given us, uh, been so generous on Twitch with uh, gifting people subs, or at least 16 by now, and bits. And now he's one of our esteemed patrons. Thank you, Exalty. We love you. You're awesome. That's kind of brilliant. We're going to couple of things we can throw in there. With Patreon, you get an um, extra hour of all of our content each and every week. You can join us live for that. Watch. We have Libra Pay. We have merch, man. We don't have penguin dresses, yeah. but we got penguin <laughs> shirts. Yes. PayPal. Yeah. <laughs> all kind of wish list. Uh, we got stuff for the studio, stuff for Jordan, Pedro, and Jill. And of course, <laughs> let's not forget magic internet money, Bitcoin, man. I heard they're mm -hmm. not worth anything. Send them all to us because I will. Um, we nope. not going to hoard that. Go to immediately convert that for stuff for the show uh, thanks everyone for making this possible that is kind of brilliant uh mm -hmm. keeping us loud as i say live once again and independent no mattress ads yay i consider yay. that a victory each and every week yes every little yes. buck helps plus your name <laughs> there look the advertisement's mm -hmm. over that's kind of does that really count of like hey man it's it's a fundraising drive. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're advertising for ourselves. I think that's just called uh, shilling. Well, I call it yeah. shameless self-promotion on these timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> because turns out doing stuff at this level got expensive. And you all are yeah. helping out with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. So... A slice of pie. That looks like a very... That, that slice of pie looks like it's up to something. Yeah, it looks more like pumpkins that's, and raspberries in that's there. That's very artsy. I was that's actually going to say that, of pie. that looks like, you know, maybe a loaf of bread and a pomegranate got it on. Um, oh, there mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a pomegranate sandwich. All right. Uh, well, no one picked this story, so I'll take it. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have uh, official support for uh, Ubuntu server. So uh, this person, James A. Chambers, this comes from his website, decided, you know what, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pulled a Thanos and decided, yes, I'm going to build it, get everything I need to get it up and running. And he ran into some issues, uh, which is to be expected when I'm you're trying to run. You, I just looked at the scroll bar for this page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ran into a few issues. And uh, yeah, he actually managed to sort it out most of them. And he does say that if uh, this... Um, kind of turns into something that he may uh, try and get it to be official. But right now it's just his project because he wanted to do it. He wanted um, Ubuntu server on the Raspberry Pi 4. Mm -hmm. Fair. You have that, to force something just, into existence. I know those feels. The quintessential Aww. Linux story. Yes. You want something that doesn't one. exist. <laughs> yeah. You want yeah. something that doesn't exist. You make it. You have the tools, you have everything at no, your disposal. No, Pedro, if, if I learned anything from the last story, it's that you buy a Mac. That'll fix it. Yeah, yeah you can install your Ubuntu server on a Mac. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's going to be a fun video. Um. Aww. <laughs> Well, I love this. This is this is so awesome. And I think, you know, this should really, you know, he's helping to contribute to the mainline Ubuntu server 20.04 Raspberry Pi 4 support without even knowing it. When, and actually, he yep. probably knows it, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, the, but that code is going to go a long way to improving the Raspberry Pi 4 support under Ubuntu. So that'll be really good. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant, man. I oh, Non-jokingly aside, man, I, I respect of Like, that's not a thing. But my process is like, uh, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get to the point on Google, when you're looking for something and you run into your own post, that's when you're like, okay, fine. Guess got to do mm -hmm. a thing. So good on you, mate. Good on you. Yeah. Maybe you're working on a thing that you're working on drilling it into existence. Uh, it's going to make it a real boy, a real girl. And uh, you want to tell us about it? Or maybe you just want to say hi? Tell us what's going on in your life and maybe a cool project, maybe, Pedro? Mm -hmm. Yes, especially if it's a cool project. Whether or not it involves a Raspberry Pi, that's up to you. We know for a fact that <laughs> Linux Nuru um, over in uh, Discord actually prefers the alternatives. But hey, LinuxGameCast.com, contact button fairly self-explanatory just make sure you pick lwdw on the little show box that's all you need to do fill out the form we will feature your story about your <laughs> awesome stuff right here right now or maybe you'd like to add to one of the stories that we uh brought up during the show and uh do like uh Nemo you, here. You could have a comment yeah. on it. And you, feel free to leave yeah. us uh, <laughs> messages on Patreon or uh, YouTube. I can't give you 100% on YouTube. We have nine years of videos and comments coming in every day, so it <laughs> might get missed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fair warning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can do uh, what Nemo did and actually add something to one of the stories that we brought up. This one is about the uh, display calibration Um bit that Ven brought up last week and this while mm -hmm. talking about monitor calibration in GNU slash Linux, you didn't mention the color hug, the open source, open hardware, uh, display color meter. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I looked at the website and it's, um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, <laughs> Jill, you were going to add it in there, right? Yes, I had intended intended to and, and forgot to put that little snippet in when I was writing my show notes because I had read all about it and I knew about it. And uh, yeah, the color hug is now, awesome. I was fully aware of the color hug, but there's a, re a reason that I didn't put it in the show notes. Why could you think mm -hmm. that would be, Joe? It was uh, more expensive than the other mm, options? Nope. No? <laughs> hmm playing a game now ah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I i don't know otherwise unless it didn't work with the piece of software we were talking about nope pedro <laughs> nope. i'm guessing you're going to give the answer uh am i because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was just going to say i looked at the website and i wasn't decided whether it was um husky or husky no <laughs> the reason i didn't put it in the show man i was giving everyone all the chats it's been out of stock forever. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, that oh. is a thing. Okay. So if you can't buy it. And I should have remembered that because I looked at that last week. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw the $95 uh, price tag and said, nope. Yeah. Uh, ooh, there's a color <laughs> hug uh, plus. How much is that? Oh, I'm taking pre-orders for $300. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, if you're looking at like, you know, a spectrometer coloring... <laughs> I mean, if you're going to get something that's going to be studio accurate, you're going to be spending about 12. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you can get, this is like what you could find laying around on eBay. It's going to be good enough and it's going to give you some idea. It's going to give you something to play with, like breaking out an old spider. You're going to look at that and be like, ah, I want to get something a little bit better than that, which you do because older ones you do got to keep in mind, they're calibrated for um, cold cathodes not leds so your modern monitors are going to have led backlights on them and they're not set up for that also one of the things with the spiders is they use an organic sensor that's going to degrade mm -hmm. over time so you, eh, it's going to be hit or miss but it'll let you like play with them like hey is this something is this a rabbit hole i want to go down on 100 mm -hmm. <laughs> percent. so last but not least no Tickers? ones Troll. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Jill. <laughs> okay. So, no might not be everyone's cup of tea as De Pedro, but thank you for supporting <laughs> them as they fight against patent trolls. Thanks for the defense fund link. Mike G. Yay. Thank you, Mike G. And yeah, as I mentioned last week, this helps send a message to patent trolls everywhere that they should never target free software because mm. our community is big and it comes out and 
and uh, we'll raise the funds to take care of things. <laughs> they got the funds. We'll be able to fight it in court. We don't have to worry after I did some research on the Peyton company. I was like, oh, that's part of the Rothschild nice. group. Mm -hmm. They're not going to run out of money to fight this. Um, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> fight the good fight. I threw this in here because I knew we had a gnome story and I knew Pedro couldn't help himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well... To be fair, my story at the top was good um, <laughs> for the most part because it was actually improving yeah. performance uh, about GNOME and it was great, you know. It's a good thing what Canonical is doing. But uh, I just want to give Jill some mad props mm -hmm. for actually uh, being a very good troll with this one and reading <laughs> that exactly as it was written. Cup of tea as De Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <is> the Pedro, <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Jill. Very Yay! good. <laughs> you know what? On that final show, how about we run some credits? <laughs> ah, credits. Yay! <laughs> credits go to credit. They're going to TikTok by. Yay, Ben! Yay, Pedro! That's right. Easy enough for Steve to do it. Yay, Jill! Yeah, Jill! <laughs> Even Steve's husband can do it, yes. Hey, man, if I needed something really tiny as assembled with the utmost accuracy, I'd be like, Steve, what's up, man? Um, <laughs> yeah, how much yeah. money do you want? <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> Aw, our beautiful producers and executive producers and people who donate hardware. <laughs> we love Seriously, you. Seriously, all y'all and... are awesome. <laughs> we love you. I love that it's just Aww. deliberately off now. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Created by Brad. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> 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 <laughs>